Hi, I'm Belinda Luscombe. I'm editor at large at Time magazine. Susie Orman is one of America's most influential, most well respected, uh, most successful, and definitely most fun financial advisors. And she's here to answer 10 questions with Time magazine today. Ms. Orman, welcome. Thank you. So, does the world really need another credit card? No, the world does not need another credit card. What the world needs is another vehicle, whether it's a prepaid debit card or debit card, to get people to pay in cash. People have got to learn if they don't have cookies in the cookie jar, they can't eat a cookie. So yours is different. Yours is a debit card. You've got to put money in in order to buy anything. But mine isn't just any other prepaid debit card. In my opinion, what happened years ago is that these prepaid debit cards came out. Many of them with fees of anywhere from $13 to $50 a month, which is what the consumer is paying. I came out with a card which absolutely levels the playing field. I think people should have a card that is better than cash. I think people should have a card that gives them things for free, such as identity theft protection. Rather than paying $14 a month for certain things, they should get it for free. I think the system has got to change. So this is an Occupy credit card? This is an Occupy debit card, a debit card that serves as a bank that you can put in your pocket. There is a $3 a month charge and that's all it will cost you if you use it like I tell you to. But once we start making money, and I hope we make money, the $3 will go away. One of the reasons that I was excited to, about interviewing you is that you actually tell people how much you're worth. Yes. So how much are you worth? It fluctuates daily, but we're worth about $25 million. So uh, coming from a strong thousand air over here to a, a millionaire, do you not feel that there's some discrepancy in your ability to give financial advice to people when you are so liquid and wealthy yourself and the people that you're speaking to, you know, they don't have jobs, they're really in, in dire financial straits. Do you, how can you really understand what they're going through? For seven years, I was a waitress making $400 a month. Here's a girl who even after she made money, had one of her employees rip her off, then had $250,000 of credit card debt and realized that I had less money than the waitress that was waiting on me in a Denny's. Don't think that I don't remember what it's like not to have a pot to pee in. Who, in your opinion, is more to blame for the current crisis that we find ourselves in? Is it consumers? Or is it the banks? The banks, hands down. I know everybody likes to blame the consumers for they should have known what they were doing. They did this, they, are you kidding me? They didn't understand liar loans. If the banks, the mortgage companies, Wall Street, you name it, weren't so concerned with their bottom line profits, they never, ever, ever would have given loans to half these people who bought homes that couldn't afford it. A lot of financial advisors would say, or a lot of guys on the street would say, that your m ideas for investment are way too risk averse mm. for people to make any money. How would you respond to that? I would say, when things are going bad and you don't know what's going to happen in the world, aren't you better to be safe than to be sorry? So yeah, I was risk adverse. You've got your new show on Oprah's network. Your book is a massive bestseller. You are now legitimately probably one of the most famous people in America, and therefore you have to take the downside of fame, which is that people parody you on Saturday Night Live. Love it. <laughs> oh my God. Today I have to tell you that no matter where I go, women always seem to ask me the same thing. It doesn't matter if I'm on the Oprah show or out on the street walking my cat. <laughs> they ask me, Susie, where do you get your jackets? Yeah, of all my honors, even of being the one most hundred influential people on the time list, one of the hundred most powerful women in the world according to Forbes, one of the things that really is the greatest honor is being parodied on Saturday Night Live. Because then you know you've made it mainstream. I love that they do it. We have more people living in unmarried households than we have people living in married households now for the first time in decades, and according to census figures that just recently came out. Does the advice vary for those different sets of people? Does the financial advice vary? So I've always found that the people that call into the Susie Orman Show that are in the most financial trouble are people who are in a relationship that isn't a good relationship. You know, I have a saying which is FICO first, then sex. Huh. And I mean that saying. 
You should know each other's FICO scores before you go to the next step of being serious with one another. That's great. Can I ask just finally, I know you've given us so much time, but what is the weirdest piece of advice you've been asked for? Like what, what are some of the weirdest questions where people... Can I afford $6,000 for a sun deck for my pet iguana? Can I afford $100,000 to be able to clone my dog? These are not hard questions to answer. Yeah, but guess what? I looked at their money, and they were both approved. Really? Yes. These are people with a lot of money. Oh, I know. $6,000 for me to go to Ireland to become an elf. OK. Literally. Really. All right, I just thought I'd tell you that. She was denied. <laughs> Susie Ullman, thanks very much. Anytime.